has delivered us from Hamashel or the power of darkness and had translated us into Hamalkuth or the kingdom of his dear Ban or son. And so after a man comes to Yahweh, he is translated from the power of darkness, which is Hasatan's kingdom, the wicked one's kingdom, into Yahweh's kingdom, the kingdom of his dear son. Now, not totally, not with his physical body, but his Ruach has been quickened or made alive and is restored back to Yahweh. So that is what has been translated into the kingdom of his dear son after he comes to Yahweh. The laws that govern the spirit world, Yahweh lets this man know, have been extended into the earth for him to operate them. Let's go to uh, Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians, the first chapter. And Yahweh shows us that the invisible world, or the spirit world, the world that we cannot see uh, on this physical earth, and being a, a physical being, created everything that we can see. Colossians, the first chapter, and we're going to read verse 16. Colossians 1 and verse 16. So this is something that after a man comes to Yahweh, he finds out that this spirit world is on top of everything. And Yahweh translates him to where he can be able to negotiate and operate in this higher realm. Colossians 1 and verse 16 reads, for by him were all things by Ra or created that are in Shemayim or heaven and that are in Eret or earth, visible and invisible, talking about Yahweh, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or Mashel, which is powers, all things were by Ra or created by him and for him. And so it's talking about Yeshua who was the one part of the Elohim head, part of Yahweh, that did the creating. They agreed that he would do the creating. And he did this by speaking his word. So the law of faith is showing us that speaking the words of Yahweh is how Yahweh created everything. And he also instructs man and shows him that that's how he operates the law of faith. And he receives the promises and the blessing that Yahweh has bestowed upon him. Let's go to Psalms 33. Psalms 33. So Yahweh created everything, and Yahshua was the creator part that created the heavens and the earth. And he did this by speaking his word. Psalms 33. And we're going to read one verse, verse 6, Psalms 33, and let's read verse 6. By Hadabar, or the word of Yahweh, were Hashemayim, or the heavens made, and all Hasaveot, or the host of them, by the nephesh, or breath, of his mouth. So here Yahweh is showing us an important ingredient about the law of faith. Like Yahweh had us look at Bereshith or Genesis, the first chapter, where he, it talks about, and Elohim said, and Elohim Amar, or said, and Elohim said. And it, it talks about him saying so much in Genesis, the first chapter, that it almost gets redundant. But what he is doing is illustrating to the man that comes to him that this is how you operate in the spirit world, in the world that you have been translated into. You say the words of Yahweh like Yahweh said. And we looked at the scripture where Yeshua said, you will surely get the same result. And that you, the man, would be able to not only do what Yeshua did, but he said he would also be able to do other things. So Yahweh is, is breaking it down so that the man, after he comes to Yahweh, he can understand 
how to operate in the spirit world. And so he knows that the laws that govern the spirit world have been extended to govern the earth. They are the same identical laws. Let's go to our Proverbs, the 15th chapter. So we see that Yahweh framed the world. The word, it says, the word of Yahweh, by the word of Yahweh were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth, by him say ye. And we're looking at the law of faith, and he's teaching us about it, because he wants man to say. We're going to look at Proverbs 15 and 23. Proverbs 15, and let's read verse 23. A Adam or man hath simka or joy by the answer of his mouth, and a dabar or word, a mar or spoken in due season, how told or good is it? So here is Yahweh reinforcing and confirming to the man that he has joy by the answer of his mouth. When someone asks that man a question, does he come back and say the words of Yahweh? Or does he come back and not take the opportunity to say the words of Yahweh, to create and to frame like Yahweh said? And we've used this example over and over again, this truth that Yahweh saw darkness, but he wanted light. So he called light and said, light be. And he's telling man to do the same thing, and he will get the same result. And the person that he has to convince, first of all, and to cause the faith to rise up, first of all, is inside himself, within himself. And the way he does that is by saying the words of Yahweh over and over again to himself. And we had used the example about Yahushua and Caleb to where they had to say over and over to themselves, we're going into the promised land. We're well able to take the promised land. And they had to say it to themselves for 40 years. There are people that take the word of Yahweh and they'll say it to himself for three days and then they'll say, oh, this is not working. And then they'll quit. Well, whoop de doo they, held, they hung in there for three days. Yahushua and Caleb had to say it for 40 years in the midst of two and a half million people that at least the adults, maybe not two and a half million, but there's a whole lot of adults. We know that there were at least 10 that went over to spy out the land. And Yahweh said they were saying evil words. Why? Because they weren't saying what Yahweh said, that they were well able, that they had been given the land. What they have to do, and we have to do, is present ourselves and walk it out. Yahweh has already told, and we're going to look at the scripture, the end from the beginning, and he's teaching man how to do the same thing. So they did it for 40 years, and that's how Yahweh shows us to you keep off the negativity that's around you, because you're building up yourself on the words of Yahweh and you're keeping Yahweh's word which is the solution in front of you. That's what Yahshua and Caleb had to do. They had to keep the solution in front of them in the midst of all of these people grumbling and complaining for 40 years before they all fell dead, the ones that were 20 years old and upward in the wilderness. And that's how Yahweh shows us to keep our belief strong in Yahweh and how to, to progress and how to draw in like a magnet the promises that Yahweh has freely given us. And Yahweh showed us they're not automatic. Just like receiving salvation from Yahweh is not automatic. Salvation is available, but if the man doesn't pursue and go get it, if he doesn't repent and be baptized and believe that Yahshua is the son of Yahweh and that he gave him as a ransom and as a remission, the salvation is there all day long, but he will get nothing, zilch, if he doesn't make the move. So all of Yahweh's promises are the same way. They're not automatic. So here he's saying, a man has joy by the answer of his mouth. That is, if he says 
the joy-filled things that Yahweh said belong to him. Because when he says them and he keeps saying them, and he keeps saying them, they come to him. That's how they come to him. They won't come to him because he says them, but saying them is a part of them coming to him. Yahweh put the, the dynamic, the dynamo, the dynamite in his word. It's already in the word. But it takes saying it to cause that dynamite might to be ignited. And to set that law in motion to where eventually it's like a snowball rolling down the hill. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it will come to pass. It flips the switch <coughs> on the law of faith. But it said that you have to start it with your mouth. So a man has joy by the answer of his mouth if he says what Yahweh said. And he said, a word spoken in due season, how good is it? It's very good because Yahweh said that my word never returns void. If you say what I say, you will receive what I said you will receive. Because Yahweh's word is full of his faith. Let's go to Luke, the eighth chapter. And again, Yahweh showed us that it's not the ground that determines what the seed produces. It's the seed. And Yahweh has showed us that His seed is the Word. It's His Word. Luke, the 8th chapter. And He gives us these natural examples, these farming examples, so we can look and see exactly how to operate the man that comes to Yahweh, once he's been translated into the kingdom of his dear son, how to operate in that kingdom. Look at natural things. Luke 8, we're going to read one verse, verse 11. Luke 8 and verse 11 reads, Now the parable is this. The seed is what? Is Hadabar or the word of Elohim. The seed is the word of Elohim. And again, Yahweh has packed his word with his own DNA. He said that my words are life. My words are alive. They're living. But it requires them to be spoken. He started it in Genesis, the first chapter, speaking the word. And again, it, it almost gets redundant because he keeps saying, and Elohim said, and Elohim said, and Elohim said. It's kind of like teaching elementary school and kindergarten. He's saying, when you come to me, man of Yahweh, when you come to me, woman of Yahweh, this is how you operate. Imitate my role model. So when Yahweh's word is planted into man's quickened ruach or spirit, Yahweh showed us that that's called good ground. And that's the only ground that reproduces. He said some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. But it's guaranteed the manufacturer, just like the manufacturer will tell you what to put in your car and what not to put in your car, the manufacturer of this Bible knows what it takes to cause his word to reproduce. The manufacturer of that car knows what it takes to cause the car to run and keep running in good condition. The manufacturer of this word knows what it takes to cause his word to be activated and to come to pass. And that's why he started in the first chapter, in the first book of the Bible, speaking, talking. And when you really look at it from Genesis to Revelation, Yahweh is talking. He's speaking. Why? Because that's putting that law of faith in motion. It's activating it and it's causing things to come to pass. And he said it over and over and over again. So he's saying, man, get a clue. Let's go to Yeshaya 55. When Yahweh's word is planted into good ground, which is man's quickened ruach, which has been made alive. It was spiritually dead, but it's been made alive after he comes back to Yahweh. It will reproduce. It's a sure thing. It's a 200% guarantee that it will reproduce. Isaiah 55, and we're going to read verse 11, because it's the seed that 
makes the ground deliver what it's supposed to deliver. The seed is what determines it. And Yahweh already said that the word is the seed. And now he's going to tell us some more about his word. Isaiah 55 and verse 11. And it reads, So shall my word or debar be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Well, we are Yahweh's representatives in the earth. We are supposed to be sending his word back and forth to Shemayim. He said, if two or three of you agree, where yet? On earth. If two or three of you bind something on earth, if two or three of you say something on earth, he said, then it shall be done in Shemayim. This is where the instigation, this is where the initiation starts. It's the man on earth saying it. And then on earth, on heaven, it follows. But be sure you're saying Yahweh's word. And he sent us here, he said, Yahshua said to pray that thy kingdom come where? In earth mm -hmm. as it is in heaven. And he was saying that. We're supposed to say the same thing. And how, but how do we do that? We say the words of Yahweh and we pull that will. We pull his kingdom. We pull out of the spirit world the things that Yahweh said belong to us. Because he said his word that goes forth out of his mouth. Well, all you're doing is just saying the same thing. It's, it's, it's coming out of your mouth. And we're going to see where Yahweh says, I watch over my word to perform it. So what is he doing? He's waiting for somebody to say his word. So then he can send his malachim and do it. He's showing us the process. Let's go to uh, Isaiah 46. So just like Yahweh, man is to declare things before they happen. Isaiah 46. Yahweh uses one phrase, calling things that be not. But all it is is saying what you want. Like we use the example, not saying the olds, which they call the news, they're saying what has already happened and is negative. We're saying what Yahweh says that's going to happen and is positive. And we're agreeing with it. And we're praising Yahweh that we've already received it. It doesn't take rocket science, as my Ish says. Isaiah 46, I'm going to read one verse, verse 10. Isaiah 46 and verse 10 reads, Declaring the end from Habarasheth, or the beginning, and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done are mar or saying, My yaats or counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So Yahweh is saying, This is the family that we've joined when we came to Mount Zion. When the man comes to Yahweh, he said, in Hebrew or Hebrews that you haven't come to just a natural place. You've come to Mount Zion and to uh, the heavenly host and to an innumerable company of angels. You've come to the place where everything came out of. The invisible created what we see, the visible. He's saying this is where you've come. And this, this is who you are. This is, I'm instructing you how you can frame and create your world the same way I did in Genesis. Just say what I said. He said, you can declare the end from the beginning. That's what I do. Now I'm showing you how to do it. I've given you the dominion. He said that in Genesis 1 and 26. He said, I gave man the dominion. Well, we know man lost the dominion, but then Yahshua came and to restore man so he could get back the dominion. And after a man comes to Yahweh, then he's got back that same dominion that the man had lost. 
declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times. He's always done this. Again, the spirit world laws have just been extended down to the earth. They're the same laws. And the man that comes to Yahweh is supposed to be operating those same spirit laws just like Yahweh and Yahshua. And from ancient times of things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. As long as we're saying what thus said Yahweh, it's, just, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when it's going to come to pass. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a sure thing. It's a 100% sure thing, just like everything Yahweh said in the Bible. It might not all have come to pass yet, <clears throat> but just keep living. Just keep watching. It's not if, it's just when it's going to come to pass. It's a sure thing. So the man that comes to Yahweh should use this formula because he can never fail. Go to Romans, the fourth chapter. So just like Yahweh, this is what the man is supposed to do after he comes to Yahweh. Romans, the fourth chapter. Declare the end from the beginning. And don't think it's strange that you're doing that. The world will think it's strange, but Yahweh said we're supposed to study to show ourselves approved unto Him, and we're supposed to progress. If we've been in this thing for 10 and 20 years, we shouldn't still be at the elementary school stage. The only way we would still be at the elementary school stage is if we're not letting Yahweh lead us on down the road. Yahweh wants to take us on down the road. Romans, the fourth chapter, and verse 17. Romans 4, and let's read verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a Abba, or father, of many am, or nations, before him whom he believed, even Elohim, who quickeneth Habu, or the dead, and Korah, or calleth those things which be not as though they were. This is just saying identical what he said in Isaiah 46. Declaring the end from the beginning. And he told Abraham this when Abraham had no children. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, children of Yahweh, you do the same thing. And it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. Just keep doing it. He says, I made you a father of many nations when he had no children, nothing. Before whom, him whom he believed, Abraham believed him. Because he understood that Yahweh quickens the dead and he was physically, he had no, no physical, no natural hope that he could have children. He was past that point and his wife was the same way. Well, he didn't have natural hope, so what did he do? He got him some supernatural hope from the words that Yahweh said in his word. Let's go to uh, Job, the 22nd chapter. So Yahweh told man to say what is going to happen before it happens. He told him to do that. That's what you call the just living by faith. And we're talking about the law of faith. But so many of us are just coming to the point where we're understanding the law of faith and how to operate in it. But I say better late than never. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. We're going to get everything that Yahweh has provided for us in this life and in the life to come. Why? Because now we're going to work this law and work it and work it. And it's just a matter of when it comes to pass. We know it's guaranteed to come to pass. So Yahweh told man to say what's going to happen before it happens. Uh, we're in uh, Job 22. And we're going to read verse 28. Job 22 and verse 28 reads, Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and high or, or the light shall shine upon thy ways. So here he's talking about man saying some things about himself and about his life. And he said, it shall be established. It shall come to pass. It's no doubt. Thou shalt also 
He's saying this is a commandment. Do it. Thou shalt also decree a thing. Decree what it is about your life. Don't be like the world, like the olds, talking about his news, but they're reporting all this doom and gloom. Decree and report and confirm and rehearse the good that Yahweh said is coming into your life. You shall also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you, and the light shall shine upon your way. You'll know what way to go. You'll know how to conduct yourself. So you run smack dab into the middle of those blessings and promises that you are confessing from Yahweh's word and that you're standing on and that you are agreeing with Yahweh that he told you the truth. Let's go to Jeremiah, the first chapter. So Yahweh is waiting on man to speak or plant his word. And he should know that Yahweh is waiting because he will perform it or he will do it. Jeremiah, the first chapter. And we're going to read uh, one verse, verse 12. So he told man, all you have to do is say my word. I'm, I'm up on my throne. I'm watching. I'm waiting. I got all these malachim, and I'll send them right there. And we can look at the example of Doniel. When he prayed and stood on something, and he was telling himself all that time and thanking Yahweh, it took 21 days, but he, he never said, oh, well, you know, Yahweh's not coming. No, he understood the law of faith. He stood on it, and he kept what he said. Jeremiah 1 and verse 12, and it reads, Then Amar or said Yahweh unto me, Thou hast well seen. For I will hasten my debar or word to perform it. I'll hurry up and perform it. It says the eyes of Yahweh roam to and fro throughout the earth. What's he looking for? He's looking for a man that will stand up and say what he said. He says he's looking for a man of immuna or faith. And you can tell a man of Yahweh has faith after he comes to him because you hear him saying the words of Yahweh. And you hear him saying and calling things before they happen because he understands, hey, I'm the just. I'm the righteous. This is how I live. This is not a fad that's going to pass away because Yahweh said in, in Ebri, you can't please me unless you believe what I'm saying is the truth. And most people don't. Say what Yahweh said, and they don't operate the law of faith because they don't believe what Yahweh is telling them is true. You can even see some don't even observe the weekly Shabbat commandment not to forsake the assembly because they don't think that they'll be under any curse. They don't think there are any consequences. The bottom line is they think Yahweh's a liar. They don't think that Yahweh tells the truth. But again, the just... Don't think that. The just are ordering their lives, their whole lives, including getting control of their mouth so that they can say what Yahweh said, knowing, like he just said right here, I will hasten. I'm not slack about it. As soon as the word goes forth out of the man's mouth and the man keeps telling himself, Yes, thank you. Thank you, Father. Every, all things are working out for my good. Thank you, Father. My family is saved. Thank you, Father. That they love to come to the temple. Thank you, Father. That all of my needs are supplied according to your riches and glory. Thank you, Father, that there is no lack in my life. Thank you, Father, that I'm walking in divine health. Thank you, Father, that my bones are getting stronger and stronger. Thank you, Father, that they're like brass. Thank you, Father, that my youth is being renewed as the eagle. And those are scriptures that are right in here. Yahweh said them. He always tells the truth. His words are alive. And so I rehearse it to myself. You rehearse it to yourself. And it's just a matter of time before it is translated out of the spirit world into this world. Because Yahweh's watching over it, and he hurries up and performs it. 
And again now, a day with Yahweh is as a thousand years. So we might say it today, and we might say it for three or four months. But you break that down a thousand years with Yahweh, and Yahweh probably got it to you in about ten minutes. But that may be 10 years your time, or it might be 5 years your time. Either way, what do you care as long as you get it? And he told you it's a sure thing. Yeah. Go to, uh, let's see, Jeremiah, the 11th chapter. So he hastens, he watches over his word. He hurries up to perform it. And he's, his eyes are roaming to and fro throughout the earth to see and hear somebody say his word. So he can say, all right, go over there. Let him know I heard him. And we know you heard you are because you're filling up this temple every Shabbat. You're putting it in your people's heart to come to Yahweh and Yahshua's temple. 11, and we're going to read one verse, verse 5. And it reads, That I may perform the oath which I have sworn unto your Abba or fathers, to give them a land flowing with milk and honey, as it is this yam or day. Then Amar or answered I, and Amar or said, So be it, O Yahweh. So you see, when he tells man, I'm going to do this for you, he's thinking about, I said that, and I'm going to do it. Being in this wicked world, you have some people that will tell you they're going to do something, and they lie. They don't show up. They don't do it. But Yahweh is not like that. Again, he's translated us out of this crooked world into the kingdom of his son. So we're operating now on a higher level. He extended the laws of heaven down here on the earth for the men and women that come to him so they can operate those laws and they can get on the earth what Yahweh has promised them. He said, that I may perform the oath that I swore unto your fathers to give them a land flowing with milk and honey as it is this day. And then, here, here's the man agreeing. Then answered I. He's got his head on straight. He's not stupid. He said, so be it, O Yahweh. Oh, yes. Let that happen to me. I receive that. I believe that. You're telling the truth, Yahweh. Go to Jeremiah, the 29th chapter. That's why it was so wrong and backwards for the children of Israel, the spies, pretended them to come back. Talking about the giants and what they couldn't do. After That was insulting to Yahweh after he told them he gave them the land. And then they're going to come back talking about this and that. And it's not true. Bottom line is they were calling Yahweh a liar. And they paid for it. So we should learn from that. Jeremiah 29 10. When Yahweh says something is one way, agree with Yahweh. Don't give it a second thought. Repeat it over and over to yourself until you get yourself in line. Because Yahweh's telling the truth and it's going to come to pass. Jeremiah 29. And if you want to look like a fool, then side against Yahweh. If you want to always be wrong, then go against Yahweh and say what Yahweh says is not true. If you want to beat your head against a brick wall, then say the opposite of what Yahweh says. And Yahweh calls that a what? F-O-O-L. Which none of us are. Jeremiah 29, going to read one verse, verse 10. And verse 10 reads, For thus Amar or saith Yahweh, that after seventy years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you, and perform my toll, dabar, or good word towards you in causing you to return to this place. So we're looking at this other example, excuse me, where Yahweh promised that he was going to bring Israel out of Babylonian captivity after 70 years. So they had to wait 70 years. Some of them might have passed, but either way, the ones that were believing Yahweh were standing on that word and they were looking forward to it and thanking Yahweh and, and raising up their children and telling them, you know, I keep praising Yahweh, or Yahweh is good. And now they went into captivity because of something they did, their fault, disobeying Yahweh. But they believed Yahweh 
And Yahweh did. But, but you see, Yahweh is letting you know on his mind is always to perform his word. It's always to do exactly what he says. Why? Because he's righteous. Because he will always, 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 he wants us to be able to count on him and to be relaxed in that and to know that he is going to do exactly what he said. And all the man that comes to Yahweh has to do is just say what Yahweh said. He said, after 70 years, I will perform my good word. That's all he's got is good words for people that come to him, for people that love him. Go to uh, 2 Corinthians, the first chapter. So all the promises that Yahweh promised are as good as gold. They are just not automatically received. 2 Corinthians 1. Man receives them by confirming them to himself with his mouth. And again, when man repeats the promises of Yahweh, he's not trying to convince anybody out there. As a matter of fact, when a man is standing on something and he's in company of people that don't understand it, that would be stupid to even let him know he's standing. Why would you share it with somebody when they will offer you no support? As a matter of fact, they will antagonize against you. You need to find some people that are on par with you and that understand the law of faith so then two can be in agreement. Mm -hmm. You don't need to to be trying to convince anybody. No, you, you say it to yourself. And that's, that's you and Yahweh. You reap in all the blessings and the benefits that Yahweh has for you. And don't, as the, the scripture was brought up inappropriately a couple of weeks ago, cast your pearls before swine. That's casting your pearls before swine. There's no point in telling somebody who's in unbelief or who doesn't understand what you're standing in faith for what you're standing in faith for. There's no point to it whatsoever unless you just want to fight over something that, unless you just want to expend energy. Personally, I don't have energy to waste on foolishness. I have energy that I want to be productive with and do what Yahweh has called me to do. So all the promises Yahweh promised us are good as gold. The man receives them by confirming them to himself with his mouth. Second Corinthians, the first chapter, going to read verse 20. And verse 20 reads, For all the promises of Elohim in him are yea, yes, and in him amen, so be it, unto Hakabod or the glory of Elohim by us. How is it by us? It's by us because we are calling them before they happen, before they come. We're saying we believe we receive them before they get here. That's what the people of Yahweh do. That's what the law of faith tells us to do. He said all the promises, they're as good as gold. Why? Because Yahweh said them. Yahweh promised them. He always comes through. It's not a matter of if. It's never a matter of if. It's just a matter of when. And for the man to keep himself pumped up, he keeps telling them to himself over and over again, and so he sees them right in front of him. Yes, Yahweh, you're supplying all of my needs. Yes, Yahweh, my healing is sure. Yes, Yahweh, I'm getting stronger and stronger. Yes, Yahweh, I'm going from glory to glory. And these are all scriptures that you can go into the Word and you can get and write them out, which is what I've done, and I read them to myself every day. And they have become a part of me, and they're becoming more a part of me. And what it is, I'm building up myself. And so it won't be a big shock as they come to pass, which they are. Why? Because they were right in front of me all the time. They were already brought into this, work, this, this natural world by the force of the faith that Yahweh had, that snowball going in me, that... It kept going and going and going, and then the flip, the switch got flipped, coming to pass. It's as simple as that. 
Let's go to uh, James, the fifth chapter. So all of his promises are as good as gold. And it says, and in him, amen, unto the glory of Elohim by us. That is, if the man agrees with the promises and says them to himself and plants it within himself. So it grows up and produces and draws to him what Yahweh said he can have. Yaakov or James, the fifth chapter. And here Yahweh tells man to always say what he means and means what he says. James 5 and in one verse, verse 12. James 5 and verse 12 reads, But above all things, my ark, above all things, this is very important, my ark or my brethren, swear not, neither by Shemayim, heaven, neither by Ha'erit, the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yes be yes, or yea be yea, and your no no, or your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. So he's saying, say what you mean, and mean what you say. That way, you get to the point where you trust your words to come to pass. But when you're, you're talking this confused speech, talking about, what a big dog that was and it's a little bitty chihuahua or how how hot it was today and it's below zero is not sin in itself but what it does is it causes your ruach confusion to where it weakens your ability to know that your words can come to pass it's, it's confusion and it's it's convoluted speech. Doesn't mean you can't tell a joke. But Yahweh tells us here, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Mean what you say and say what you mean so then you can trust that your words will come to pass. Go to uh, Matthew or Matthew's fifth chapter. Yea, yea, nay, nay. I mean, there are certain people that they say, okay, I'll pick you up at such and such a time and such and such an hour. You know beyond a shadow of a doubt they'll be there. But then there's other people that could tell you that. And then you don't know if they're going to be there or not. And then even worse, there's some people that could tell you that and you don't even bother to get dressed because you know they won't show up or more than likely they won't and may not even call till a couple of days later. And then talk about, oh, was I supposed to come and do that? Oh, I forgot, oh, I forgot all about it. So in other words, their, their, their word, you always said that we should judge people by their word, their word means absolutely nothing. And we never want to be in that situation where our word means nothing. Because who does it hurt? It's gonna hurt us. Matthew 5 and verse 37. Matthew 5 and let's read verse 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh the Ra or evil. He said, okay, that, there's a problem. Ancient Yisrael, the ten spies, they crossed <laughs> over into evil and it, it messed them up. He said, let your communication Say what you mean and mean what you say. He said, whatsoever is more than these, you're crossing over into Hasatan's territory. Let's go to Luke, the first chapter. So Yahweh gave man examples to see how his people operated the law of faith. We saw Abraham and Sarah. Now we're going to look at Mary, or the Hebrew is Miriam, Yahshua's mother. She also operated the law of faith. Luke, the first chapter. And we're going to read verse 38. Luke 1. And let's read verse 38. And Miriam, or Mary, Amar, or said, Behold, the handmaid of Yahweh, be it unto me, According to what? Thy debar or word. 
and Hamalak, or the angel, departed from her. So this is before she became impregnated with Yahshua. But you see, she had to agree to the word of Yahweh. She, she <clears throat> has a body on this earth, making her a legal resident of this earth. And it took two for that transaction to be completed. But she said, Be it unto me according to thy word. That was her receiving, planting the seed. Again, Yahweh said his word is the seed. Planting the seed of the word. And the seed of his word, we can go look in the, the uh, Kadash Barik, the Old Testament, where it said that a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall, he shall be wonderful counselor, on and on. So what word did, what word of Yahweh did Miriam or Mary say she received? Luke, uh, the first chapter, we're going to go up to verse 26. So this Malachim had told her something, and then she said, I receive it. Just like we do here when the blessing comes out to us, we say we receive it. All right? She said, be it unto me according to your word. So what word did she say, be it unto me about? Luke 1, and we're going to start at verse 26. Luke 1 and verse 26 reads, And in the sixth month, Hamalak, or the angel, Gabriel, or Gabriel, was sent from Elohim unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, 27, to a virgin espoused to a Adam or man whose shem or name was Yosef or Joseph of Habayat, the house of Dawi or David, and the virgin shem or name was Miriam, and they got it here as Mary. So Yahweh is recounting this biography, the facts of what happened. In the sixth month, he sent the angel Gabriel to Mary, or Mary, okay? Verse 28. And Hamalak, or the angel, came in unto her, and Amar, or said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, Yahweh. Barak or blessed art thou among women. So he came in with this greeting, with this salutation, and saying, You're blessed among women. So now, her understanding Yahweh's word, her being a woman of faith and part of the just, living by faith, then she needed to get some understanding about this. Okay, he's saying, I'm highly favored. Yahweh's saying, I'm highly favored. Well, what is he talking about? Again, Yahweh said, we can't believe past what we understand from Yahweh's word. That's why he tells us to study his word so we can get understanding. And out of everything you get out of his word, get understanding where you understand exactly what you're doing and how you're operating. Okay, verse 29. And it reads, And when she saw him, she was troubled. And his amar or saying, and cast in her pay or mind what manner of salutation this might be. So she's listening and hearing what he said, but she doesn't understand. All right, and then the angel speaks up again. Verse 30. And Hamalak Amar or the angel said unto her, Fear not, Miriam or Mary, for thou hast found favor with Elohim. So he told her, D don't, you know, be afraid. It's good. It's good news that I'm coming to you with. Right. But she just didn't understand, like, okay, what, what is it about? So she was listening and asking questions to get understanding about the word that Yahweh was giving her. So let's go over here to Yachanan, the fifth chapter, so we can kind of see how Yahshua did the same thing. He, he asked people questions so they could understand and receive what it was that he was giving them. And, and, and Miriam, she was, we'll see, she's asking questions too, 
so she could understand what she was being given. John 5 and one verse, verse 6. John 5 and verse 6 reads, When Yeshua saw him lie, or laying down, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he amar or saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? So Yeshua, it sounds like he's asking the man, do you want to be made whole? But what he's asking the man is, if I reach out and touch you, do you believe that I have the power and the ability when I do that? He's, he's trying to get the man to say with his mouth so he can receive it. He's asking him, do you believe that you'll be made whole when I reach out and touch you? He's not saying, you know, do you want to be? He's saying, do you believe that you will be? And when you read on down, you see that the man said, yes, I believe. He was getting him to speak that word so he could receive the blessing. Go to uh, 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, and then we're going to go back to... Uh, to Miriam, 1 Thessalonians 5. So he asked this man, did he believe he would be made whole if Yahshua touched him? Because man can only believe what he knows Yahweh's word says. And that's why they talk about a blind faith and stuff like that. There's no blind faith. Faith is a foundation. Faith is a sure thing. And the sure thing, the foundation that it stands on, the building blocks, are the word of Yahweh. And the foundation becomes more sure and more stable by having the scriptures of Yahweh and repeating them and building up that foundation of faith. That's the substance, the foundation. Those are the bricks. The things that Yahweh said. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 21. And it reads... Prove all things. Hold fast that which is told. So in order to prove something, we got to know what Yahweh said. He's saying prove all things. He didn't just say, just take at face value what he's telling you or, or what somebody tells you the word says. He said, you go in here and you prove it for yourself. So Miriam was proving or she was, she was getting enough information so then she could stand on that faith. So she could have those building blocks. So she could have that substance from Yahweh. Let's go back to Luke, the first chapter. So Miriam asked questions to get understanding to receive the word that Yahweh was giving her. She, she needed more. And then people are different. Everybody doesn't need answers to the same questions in order to be able to, to get their, their faith building blocks built up. Because we're all different, we all perceive things in a different way. Luke 1, this time we're going to start at verse 34. Luke 1, and verse 34 reads, Then Amar, or said, Miriam, unto Hamalak the angel, How shall this be, seeing I yada, or know not a Adam, or man? So, he's telling her, you're going to be with child, you're going to bear a child. Now she's asking questions to get understanding, how, how is this going to happen? I'm a virgin. I have not known a man. I'm engaged to this, this guy, but how is this going to happen? Out of all you're getting, get understanding. She's, she's on her job. She's getting understanding. So she can stand on this word of Yahweh and receive it. Verse 35. And Hamalak Amar, or the, the angel answered, and Amar, or said unto her, Ruach HaKadosh shall come upon thee. And Hamashel, or the power of El Elyon, shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that Kadesh, or holy thing, which shall be born of thee, shall be Kara or called Haban of Elohim. So the angel broke it down. And she must have understood 
uh, what Ruach HaKadosh was, said, and the power, Ruach HaKadosh shall come upon thee, and the power, she understood it was the power of the highest, shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born thee shall be called the son of Elohim. And after she got the word, she received it by confirming it with her mouth. After she got the understanding, and she said, oh, okay, I see. This is how this is going to happen. I understand Yahweh's word is a seed, so I'll receive the seed. And he, the power of the highest is going to overshadow me. And this is how this word is going to come in me. But I understand. I have to receive this and confirm this with my mouth. So then let's just read 1 and 38 again. It says, And Miriam Amar or said, Behold the handmaid of Yahweh. She said, I'm, Yahweh, I'm here for you. I'm your servant. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll do what you want me to do. It said, Be it unto me. She's allowing like we say every day, uh, I give you my body as a living sacrifice, holy and accept un acceptable unto you, which is my reasonable service. She said, be it unto me according to thy dabar or word. And Hamalak or the angel departed from her. The connection was made. Yahweh said, this is the way it's going to be done. She said, I believe it. She said, and I receive it. Be it unto me according to your word. Go to Yachanan or the first chapter, John 1, and it's going to be the last scripture. So Miriam's confirmation with her mouth was what allowed the seed of the word to be planted within her and to reproduce and become Yeshua. That's what it happened. <coughs>